Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Hard Truth. Today's hard truth is four-fifths of the words attributed to me are things I never said and I would never agree with, and that is by Albert Einstein. Have you ever had to tell someone, don't put words in my mouth? Or have you ever watched a trial where the attorney says, objection, your honor, leading the witness? Well, I thought about it, and the fact is, I have never heard Dylan say anything about this case. All I have are statements that other people said she said. Okay, now Dylan is in a world of a predicament because if she signed a statement saying she saw a masked man pass by her, she put herself in the middle of the action in a quadruple murder case. Okay, I want to examine a couple of these statements and it might make, take me a few videos to cover them all, but this is the first one. Okay, so it's time to grab a coffee or a nice cup of tea as we begin our story. Let's start with the report that Ethan and Zana were found by somebody who was called over to the house, okay? The report that Ethan and Zana were found by somebody who was called over to the house after the fact is a problem. Okay, the first problem is conflicting reports of who was killed first and where Ethan and Zana were found, okay? In a February the 3rd News Nation report, the one up top, it says Kaylee Goncalves and Madison Mogan were killed first, and the sources confirmed that Ethan Chapin and Zana Granota were killed on the second floor afterward, according to sources. They also said that Chapin was killed in the doorway of Granota's room, and Granota apparently fought back. She repeatedly grabbed the knife from suspect Brian Kohlberger, and she suffered deep cuts to her fingers. Okay, in the probable cause affidavit, uh, an, ep an excerpt of it here uh, at the bottom, it says, in Officer Smith and I entered the King Road residence through the bottom floor door on the north side of the building. Officer Smith and I then walked upstairs to the second floor. Officer Smith directed me down the hallway to the west bedroom on the second floor which I later learned through Zana's driver's license and other personal belongings found in the room was Zana Kernodal's, here after Kernodal room. Just before this room, there was a bathroom door on the south wall of the hallway. As I approached the room, I could see a body, later identified as Kernodal's, laying on the floor. Okay, if uh, Ethan was killed first, he was in the doorway with a cut to his throat. Okay, why is this officer saying as he approached Ethan and Zana's bedroom, the first person he saw was Zana. And when he actually got into the room, he saw Ethan. Either Ethan was in the doorway with a cut across his throat and Zana was killed last or Zana was killed first. She was the first person you saw when you came into the room and Ethan was somewhere else in the room and you had to actually come in the room to see him. Which one is it? Because both of these are in black and white. A lot of people were saying that Ethan was uh, was killed in the doorway and that his throat had been slashed. A lot of people were saying that before the report came out about uh, somebody else finding Ethan. And then now we see these reports that somebody else uh, discovered Ethan, whoever was called over to the house. Okay, and we know that's a lie because regardless of who was killed first, when uh, DM was coming out of her room, she had to see blood from the stairs. If the person or killers left out of the kitchen, she had to see the mess in the kitchen. And 
and she, if she went to the from her room straight down to the front door she had to come through the living room she had to see all of that mess she had called all her roommates so there's no way she passed by uh Zanna and Ethan's room door and didn't look over there because she was already concerned if she was in her room calling everybody and I'm sure they have actual proof that she was calling everybody on her phone that part can be proved proven okay so there however unless she jumped out of her bedroom window and went to the front door and called police there's no way dm came out of her room and did not see evidence of a brutal murder on the stairs in the kitchen and in that living room area when she came out of her room to leave out of the front door there's no way and Let's say Ethan and Zanna's room door was closed. Let's say Ethan wasn't killed and in the doorway. Let's say both of them were in the room with the door shut when she came out of her room. She still saw blood. There's no way in the world uh, Dylan could get out of her room, down the stairs, and out that front door without knowing that a brutal murder took place in that house. And so the fact that somebody else came over and came in the house and found them is a lie. And so I'm not sure where all this is leading up to or building up to, why we need to believe that somebody else found them, but it's not true, okay? So let's move on to the uh, second issue that I wanted to talk about. A lot of people are talking about uh, Brian getting fired from his teaching assistant job just before his arrest. They found hair in his apartment and, oh, this is just uh, the icing on the cake. The Idaho 4 case has been a top news story since it happened all over the country, all over the world, basically online anyway. whatever. But here's the thing. Whatever problems uh, Brian had with his school, his job as a teaching assistant, it wasn't enough for him to cut ties. Okay, he could have moved out of his apartment. His dad was right there to help him clear out his apartment. Okay, so uh, WSU firing him and kicking him out of the school was a result of law enforcement telling him, listen, Brian is a, the prime suspect in a, that quadruple murder, and we get ready to arrest him. I mean, of course, the school is going to cut ties with him you know, for reputation's sake and to go along with whatever law enforcement was cooking up when they were staking out those people's house. Okay, so that means nothing to me. And um, I mean, people are always saying, uh, you, you taking up for Brian, you don't, you don't care about the victims. And, uh, you know, listen, I'm not advocating for anybody in this case. I'm advocating for the truth, whatever that may be. If Brian did this, I pray he gets worse than what he gave. If he didn't do it, I pray his family gets restitution that they deserve, and that's where I stand, okay? So now that that's out of the way, I want to go back to this. Uh, he didn't move out, okay? To me, the fact that Brian was going to return to school, he left all his stuff in his apartment down to his fire stick, it means he was going to come back and finish his studies. And that's a problem for the prosecution. Okay. You know, he's sitting there seeing his car make and model all over the news as the suspect in these murders down the street from his apartment. It's rumors that one of the victims is being stalked by some guy. Okay. He, know he's, he knows he's been online saying some things. Okay. Some guy in your complex just got swatted. You know, the F, the, the police are killing people right there in the parking lot. Okay. They wouldn't have had to fire me uh, as a teaching assistant or kick me out. I would have left WSU. Okay. I would say, hey, man, it's too much going on between these two schools. I came to study crime, not to tiptoe around every day on my way to class. I would have, I would have left. They wouldn't have had to fire me. Okay, but he didn't give up his apartment. He still didn't didn't give it up, and he didn't flee when they kept uh, stopping him on the way home, or uh, when they were staking out his house in Pennsylvania. I'm sure he saw them out there staking out his house. He probably was taunting them, putting gloves on, taking out the garbage, probably looking out the window laughing. They couldn't even 
you know, lock me up when he, they stop me and dad on the road. He probably, ha, ha, ha. They don't have anything on me, these clowns. He probably was taunting them, I believe, that much. But it's a problem for me that after all was said and done, this guy was coming back to school. Okay? And that's an elephant in the room for me. I'm going to just see what you guys think about it. You know, I'm going to get off my rant and just wait to hear what you have to say. I'm going to calm down. Okay. Take a sip of my tea because I just don't like foolishness. That's my pet peeve, foolishness. And to talk about what happened to somebody two months after the fact of a crime is foolishness. Okay? That's why they have shows like First 48. Because whatever you don't find out in the first 48 hours is being covered up, buried, burned, tossed in the ocean. Okay? Next topic.